What's up bros and welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss and today we're going to be talking about workflow between Cinema 4D and After Effects and how to make things go a little bit faster so you can see the results you want right away. I'm not a real linear type person when it comes to doing cinema stuff mixed with After Effects. Um, I like to take all my Cinema 4D stuff and I like to bring it into After Effects and I like to make it look pretty and add all sorts of stuff to it. I like to add vignettes and color and flair and all sorts of junk and um, I don't like having to render something out and then bring it into After Effects and then realize that um, I didn't do something right and maybe I need to adjust the color a little bit in Cinema first and I shouldn't have rendered yet. Um, I like to go back and forth and back and forth and make sure that everything looks good before I do my final render. And I'm going to show you today a way to speed up that workflow. And I know a lot of people say, oh, we'll just use Cineware. Well, I don't honestly think, and I've, I've talked about this before, I don't think that Cinema, uh, Cineware is really ready for prime time. It seems very slow to me. I know that there's a bunch of scripts and stuff like that that actually make it... Um, easier to use Cineware, but I'm going to show you the way that I did it before Cineware and the way that I still do it now when it comes to really highly complex scenes. Right here in Cinema, I have a camera move going. It's a little breakfast scene, right? So there's a lot going on in this scene. I've got dishes, cups. I've got, uh, you know, those have reflection on them. Uh, I've got a picture of orange juice here, and not only is it reflective, but it's refractive and it's transparent. Even over here you can see I've got these uh, these curtains and these curtains have a pattern on them and they're transparent and uh, they have a bump and there's a little bit of uh, blur going on inside of that and you know blur and transparency is always uh, heavy on the rendering. So if I wanted to render out this whole scene before I brought it into After Effects that'd be ludicrous because if I wanted to change something that wasn't correct after the fact uh, I'd have to go re-render the entire thing because I didn't know that one little thing wasn't going to work once it got into After Effects. So this is why I like to work non-linear and go back and forth and really tweak everything before the final render. Um, now, if I, if I want to just look at the motion and I want to make sure that the, the animation and everything is right, this is what I do. I go over to the render settings. I'm going to tell it to render all frames. Now, under the options section you can turn off shadows and reflection and refraction and transparency and that's a big deal because you know who knows how many minutes this scene is going to take to render even if you have a render farm and you're using team render and if i want to see the whole thing rendered out and have everything laid out for me in after effects this is what i need to do uncheck all four of these but that's not the only thing. Look, I'm using ambient occlusion. Maybe you're using global illumination. You don't want to go through all that and wait for all that, all of that. So I'm going to turn all of that stuff off. Now, when I render a frame, it looks like I'm missing a texture, but we'll keep going anyway. When I render a frame, here's what happens. Pretty quick. It's dark, yeah, but that's fine. Because at least we can get a better idea of what's going on here now. And the other thing is that some of these textures on here might take a long time to render, especially if I've got a high-res texture going on and like one of these flowers or maybe on the iPad screen or, you know, this wood that I have in here is um, like a high-res wood texture that I got from somewhere, plus it's got the bump on it and all of that. That's going to take longer to render too. So I can actually take this a step further, and there is a free plugin called XX, <laughs> XS Texture Switch. And what that does is it just assigns a blank texture to everything so that when you hit render, it's super, super fast. Another thing you can do is, is turn off your lights. Uh, that'll help. You can see here I've turned off my ambient light. I've turned off my physical sky because that's lighting too. And I think I, I had a specular light only in here that I've turned off. So, so now when I hit render, it's very flat lighting, there's no textures, there's no reflection, there's no transparency, there's no refraction, and there's no blur. So this is going to go super fast, and this is going to let you bring this into After Effects, start using it, see if you have any issues, see what you have to adjust before you actually render. So I'm going to save this now, and I'm going to send it out to my render farm. 
Uh, I'm going to set this up to um, export from my render folder in Cinema 4D. I'm going to copy and, and paste the file for all of my multipass information as well. And I'm going to let that go. So now I've got a render here of uh, my first 30 frames. And I'm going to go into After Effects and I'm going to start playing with these frames to, to start tweaking my uh, After Effects. Go to the project file here. Okay, I'm going to bring up my render. On this particular case, see, I've got a bunch of uh, multipass stuff too that I would like to deal with and make sure that everything worked. So besides my uh, regular render here, I also have depth. I've also got a motion pass that I'm going to use for RSMB Pro Vectors. And I've got object buffers, which I always just bring in anyway, uh, just to have them there. And, and if I use them, I use them. If I don't, I don't. I'm going to lay this down on its own track. So here we go. Um, I just did the first 30 frames only for this example. So here's those 30 frames. And now I can go in and figure out how I'm going to tweak the depth. So my depth channel, for example, you can see that I set on the table for there to be a, a sweep in the focus so that uh, if you're focusing on this edge of the table here everything else will slowly go out, go out of focus until it gets to the black area which is in the back at the end of the table. Now if I were to render out the whole thing and then realize that my depth channel was wrong well it would be a big pain to try and go back and re-render the depth channel. So doing this first actually is very helpful. So if I bring down the depth into my project and my uh, depth uh, plugin of choice is um, Frischersluft, however you pronounce that, and I'm going to put it on, select the depth layer, jack up the focus, and I'm going to select that white area around 255, so that you can see I, I have a depth going on here. Now, if that were wrong and I was done with my entire render, I'd have to go back and redo the whole thing. But if I don't like it now, I can go back and I can just change one frame. The same applies to all of the texturing and all of the transparency and everything you see here. So this is how you kind of get things moving. Um, a lot of people would say, okay, well, why not just use uh, Make Preview? Well, because you do a Make Preview and you're going to end up rendering out um, a QuickTime or frames or whatever. And it's not the actual output that's coming out of cinema. That's why I like to do it this way. I can set my output to output those frames. I can go in, I can tweak stuff, and when I hit refresh in After Effects, it's just there. So here's the example. I'm going to go all the way to frame 30, and I want to render out this one frame. So I'm going to turn everything back on. I'm going to turn my ambient occlusion back on. Um, sometimes, as well, I failed to mention this earlier, but if you're using something where you've really had to jack up the anti-aliasing, you might want to put that on none for your, your base render, or hard render, as I call it. So I'm going to put the aliasing back to best. Um, under options, I'm going to turn back on my shadows and reflections and transparency. All of my stuff is back on. Except what I'm going to do here is, on my output, I'm going to tell it I only want the current frame. I'm going to mess with just frame 30, and I'm going to send that to render now. Of course, don't forget to uh, put your <laughs> switch your texture switch back on, and uh, make sure that your lighting also is turned back on. The stuff that you turned off. There are a couple things you got to remember, but it's going to help you in the long run. You're going to tell it to overwrite too. Tell it to overwrite the render and the multipass and everything just for this frame. So the render's done here, and you can see um, I've got spaces here for where I would put stuff later on. And that was frame 30. So if I go back over to After Effects and I go to frame 30, it may or may not be loaded, just depending on you know what your cache is doing at the time. So it's always a good idea just to go back to uh, the project and uh, reload your footage. 
Of course, I need to add one frame to this composition so that we can see frame 30. Here we go. And now we've got this one frame, and now we can start messing with it. So say um, this is too dark, but I just want to brighten it a little bit, and I really don't want to mess with all the lighting stuff that I have set up in cinema. I could do that. So like I could put uh, a levels on this. And uh, that's pretty good. And then if I decide that maybe I do need to change the lighting, well, I've found out now instead of later uh, when it would be too late because I've already rendered everything. This render here took 7 minutes and 15 seconds even on a decent Mac Pro. And that's uh, only 30 frames in what I'm showing you right now, but the original was like 160. So let's see, um, 160 uh, frames times... Uh, 715, 160 times, uh, let's just say 7. Okay, so 1120 minutes, 1120 divided by 60. This render would take 18 hours. So do you really want to wait for another 18 hours if you screw something up? I know I don't. So think about the other stuff in here too. Like um, I purposely left these windows open. Uh, with nothing rendered in them because I want to be able to change what's in it. I want to maybe make the sun look like it's rising in the background or I want to put a logo in there or I want to do something with it where um, maybe maybe I'll do a couple versions of this with something different in the window each time. I don't want to sit there and go back to render this 18 hours every time I want to change something. That's why you want to be able to have this workflow set it up like this, make sure everything looks good, make sure your depth looks good and periodically go in and check those frames. You know, when something major changes, you know, um, you're coming up closer to the table. Maybe you do a render here. Maybe when you pass through the table, uh, you do a couple other stills so you can make sure um, once you pass the grapefruit and the, and the cup and all of that, that your depth looks right. So if you need to go back and change your camera, you can do that and make sure that your focus point is in, is in the right place, uh, your focus distance. Just think about all those little things. What if there's an alpha channel problem? What if the alpha channel didn't work with these curtains correctly and you couldn't adjust what was going through those? You'd have to start over. All good reasons to use this workflow. And again, the reason that you wouldn't use Cineware in this case is this is so complex and this takes seven minutes. Cineware just doesn't go as quick as cinema and I don't know why that is but think about taking two three four times as long just to sit here in After Effects and wait for this one frame to load um, it, it just it just doesn't work well enough to do something this complex so keep that in mind when you're doing your workflows when you're getting things set up do this back and forth thing if you don't like how something looks then you can just change that one frame. You can go back to cinema and you can change the one frame for seven minutes instead of all the frames for 18 hours. That's up to you. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, if you have any questions about this, let us know. Um, I'll be you know, free to answer that on Facebook or Twitter or in the Cinema 4D subreddit. Um, or if you even want to email uh, me about it or if you want to email Matt, um, you can find our website at brograph.com. You can subscribe to our newsletter there, which we try not to be too spammy with. It's very rare that we actually send one out. Um, you can uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. That way you get all of the tutorials when they come in. And check us out on social media and all that junk. And until next time, have a good one. Later, bros. Pretty good, I guess.